Hi, today we'll be coding a bunch of arms that wrap themselves around the sphere, kind of like how you see here, except our arms are going to be made up of tiny dots. Let's get started. So we're going to have the number of arms. Let's say that's going to be, um, no, not 20, 10. Uh, and we're going to have a number of dots per arm. Let's say that's going to be something like 80. And then we're going to compute the total number of dots. That's going to be n equal to the number of arms times the number of dots per arm. Now, having this, we're going to have a loop. So for let i going from zero all the way up to n, increment this i at every step and generate a dot element. And we're going to put this inside a wrapper. Let's call it ball or sphere, whatever you want to call it. Let's indent that properly and let's move on to the CSS. Let's minimize the JS. We won't be using any JS. So first up, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know I like to do something like this. On the body and on all div elements, set display grid, just to get this out of the way. Next step is we're going to set a base radius for our dots. So um, let's say something like that. And on the dot elements, we'll be setting that to the padding. And let's also set a background because otherwise we won't be seeing anything. Yeah, doesn't help much because we can't see where one element ends and the next one begins. So let's uh, take care of that. Border radius 50%. And now we can kind of see the limit, but it still looks ugly. So let's set place self center. The default is stretch. So that's uh, the deal there. But still, we want them all to be stacked. And to do so, we put them all in the same cell at the intersection between the first row and first column. So that's going to be grid area, first row, first column. Basically, our grid is just a single cell. So um, that's in the middle, by the way, um, because the height of the body at this point is given by the height of its content, which is the height of a dot element. Now let's take care of that. So let's set on the body, set height, to the full viewport height. And of course, this causes a scroll bar. Let's get rid of it, setting margin zero. Of course, we can go full nuclear, overflow hidden. Since we're here, let's also set perspective 35M. And this helps us with viewing things in 3D because setting perspective makes everything that's closer to us appear bigger and everything that's further away appear smaller. Since we're here doing 3D stuff, Let's also set on all div elements, transform style, preserve 3D. And this is for 3D context, which is a concept I've explained in an article, which I'm going to link in the description. And I'm really sorry, but I can't show it to you. I wrote this in late 2016 when I was on, a, at the time, brand new Surface Book. And um, the display of that uh, laptop started swelling after less than three years and I was told it can explode and I should really stop using it. So I did that and went back to my old laptop. And at this point, a lot of CSS tricks articles, including mine, uh, that I know all too well, are problematic on my old laptop. And yeah, because of um, a lot of embedded demos and the risk of crashing is pretty high. So I'm really sorry, but I can't show that to you, but I am going to link it in the description. And of course, you're probably not on such an old laptop as I am right now, and it's probably going to work better for you. <laughs> anyway, let's get back uh, here and set a few more things in a style attribute. And here we're going to have um, the number of arms set as a custom property. And we do so so we can pass it to the CSS. And if we modify this number of arms, we only need to modify it here because it's passed to the CSS as a custom property and we don't need to modify anything further in the CSS. So something like this, and we're going to do the exact same thing for the number of dots. Just uh, change that. Okay, now we're going to take this loop and use something very similar in a style element. So here we're going to have a loop and that's going to go up to the number of arms there, first up, and uh, we're going to have something like this. Oh, so um, dot nth child 
yeah, if I could type, that would be great. And we're going to have all elements after the dots on the previous arms. So that's going to be the number of dots times the current arm index plus one because the nth child index is one based as opposed to the loop index, which is zero based. And here we're going to have a custom property, which we're going to set to the loop index. And we're going to take all of this and paste it. So we're going to have it once more, make a few tweaks here. So that's going to go up to the number of dots. So here we're going to have every n dots and we're going to set here a different custom property. Now let's move back to the CSS and start positioning stuff in 3D. Okay, uh, we have a problem. Let's refresh. Hopefully that fixes it, yeah. Okay, so here we're going to set a transform and we're going to have a rotate and uh, we're going to have an angle. Let's compute that. So this is going to be a calc value and we're going to have the arm index i over the total number of arms. Okay, times one turn. And of course, we're not going to see anything at this point, but if we also add a translation, so let's say 20 times the radius. Okay, it's starting to look like something, but we don't want a 2D rotation. We want a 3D rotation. So we're going to use a rotation around the Y axis. Okay, so something like that. But as you can see, we're kind of seeing those dots from the side and that doesn't look pretty. So let's fix that. We're going to reverse the rotation after the translation. So we're going to put this inside a calc, minus one times to reverse the rotation. And now we see everything from the front again. Now we're going to have another similar rotation. Um, and this one is going to position the dots uh, between one pole and the other. So what we actually want uh, right now, so if we start a simple rotation, this is going to start from three o'clock and it's going to go clockwise. But we don't want to start from three o'clock. We want to start from 12 o'clock. So that means that we're going to go back here by 90 degrees because the positive direction is clockwise and we're going in the opposing direction, minus 90 degrees. Also, here we're just going to go half a sphere, right? So from the North Pole to the South Pole, that's half of it, that's half a turn, not a full turn. And of course, this is going to be uh, the index of the dot on the arm and this is going to be the number of uh, dots, right? So something like that. Uh, and of course, that's going to be a different angle. Sorry about that. Okay, so having done this, let's uh, add that here. And of course, we also need to add that. And um, we're going to use that other angle rotation around another axis. And this kind of looks like orange slices. Uh, let's put some color into it. So um, it looks a bit better. And we're going to use an HSL value. And let's say that at first, we're just going to use that uh, J, max out the saturation. Let's something, set something like 35% for the lightness. And of course, we can make this hue a bit more interesting. So let's say we can have something like we have there. So, so something like that uh, times 360, for example. Uh, but we can also double this, so we can have twice, for example, something like that. And we can also have a radial gradient, sorry, radial gradient there, and we can go from white to transparent white, so RGBA white zero, so something like that. And that doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle. So we can have a circle at 25%, 25%, so something like that. And of course, uh, we can put this at 75% and it's going to look something like that. Now here, let's just uh, set a more fitting background. 
uh, not quite black, but still pretty dark. So something like this should work. Let's collapse the body. I don't think uh, we will be needing it for now. Okay, um, but one thing, uh, this J value goes from zero up to the number of dots minus one. So the first value is zero for J and the last value, the maximum one, is the number of dots minus one. This means that this ratio is zero for the first J value and slightly smaller than one for the last J value. This means that the first ball is going to be right there at the North Pole, but the last ball is not going to be quite at the South Pole. So let's fix that and bring a bit more uniformity here. So we're going to add 0.5 there, okay? And you saw that to move the balls a bit too. Now, what we want is for those arms to wrap around the sphere. So they're going to wrap around the sphere a number of times. So we're going to have a number of rotations, basically. So um, a number of rotations. And it's obviously going to be smaller than 80, let's say something like 12. And of course, we're going to pass that as a custom property as well. So um, copy paste that, uh, change to the number of rotations, right? So having done this, we're also going to compute a K factor here. And this is going to be a calc volume and it's going to be the number of rotations uh, times J over. And of course we want this uh, to go fully, so we're going to have the number of dots minus one, okay? And here, we're not going to have just the i for that rotation around the y-axis. We're also going to subtract that k. And as you can see, we have uh, those arms wrapping around the sphere. Now, one thing that looks pretty weird is they look so crammed there at the poles. So we can make them smaller at the poles and let them uh, have their full size near the equator. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to compute a midway index and that's going to be a calc. Uh, so let's say it's going to be 0.5 times, and here we're actually going to just uh, take that, the number of dots minus one. And here we're going to compute an absolute value of the difference between M and the current index. So the thing is, this is going to be the maximum. Um, so the absolute value of J minus M is going to be the maximum between J minus M and M minus J. So basically that's going to be calc M minus j and this is going to be bigger than zero if m is bigger than j but otherwise we're going to have the other one so that's going to be j minus m so this gives us some um, the absolute value of that difference and we can compute a scaling factor and of course this is not what we want uh, but let's just uh, compute it like this for now so let's say we're going to have that absolute value over that midway index, okay? And let's say we're going to use it directly there on the padding. If I could use a keyboard, that would be great. <laughs> but apparently I can't. So calc, and let's use that uh, factor, F. And as you can see, it's not what we wanted. So this makes the dots smaller at the equator and they keep their full size at the poles. So what we actually want is one minus this volume and this gives us what we wanted. So the dots are smaller there and of course you can make this a tiny little bit bigger. Okay, now I want to show you how changing perspective can change things. So let's say we have perspective 5ms there. This perspective value is related to the vanishing point. So the smaller it is, the closer the vanishing point. And 
the closer we are to the plane of the screen. In this case, we are so close that we are inside the sphere and the sphere looks distorted to us. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, kind of animate that. So let's say that we're going to have keyframes animation and let's say we're going to have 90%, 100%. So it kind of just uh, stops at that value there. And we're going to have perspective, let's say 5Ms. And here we're going to have animation, uh, let's say 12 seconds, um, ease in out, infinite, alternate. And let's see uh, that uh, thing expanding. Look at it. So you can see it expand. Now we're inside that uh, sphere, right? So it's basically our perspective changes. The sphere remains the same. We're not really scaling it. It's just that our perspective uh, changes and our point of view moves closer and closer to the plane of the screen until we're inside the sphere. That's what happens. Now, I still have some ideas I could try to put into practice, but as I've mentioned earlier, I'm on an old laptop and a lot of things in 3D with a lot of elements can go bad. So I am going to stop here and I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like this, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!